हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ डॉक्टर अमित्स बायो केमिस्ट्री दिस इज अनंदिता हेयर एंड एज वी नो द इम्यूनोलॉजी लेक्चर सीरीज इज गोइंग ऑन वी हैव सो मेनी वीडियोज अवेलेबल ऑन द सेम चैनल एज अ प्ले लिस्ट नेमली इम्यूनोलॉजी सो यू कैन वॉच दैट वीडियोज आफ्टर दैट फर्दर यू कैन कम हेयर इन ऑर्डर टू स्टडी अबाउट एंटीबॉडीज टूडे वी आर गोइंग डील अबाउट एंटीबॉडीज सो एज वी हैव अ डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव to deal with the immunology so uh, from the bigger picture we will start as first suppose this is a pathogen right here you can see it's a pathogen so the pathogen can be uh, as we know it could be proteinaceous it could be carbo carbohydratic or i have used the word etc here as it could be of any other things also right any other biomolecules then it can be nucleotides also right so any other uh, environmental dna DNA content that is present in the environment, they can also act as an anti antigen, right, for our body or pathogen, right. So what happened the very first time is it has crossed the first line of defense, right? It has crossed the first line of defense. This is the innate arm and this is the adaptive arm. After crossing the first line of defense, it will go to the bridge area. Bridge area means here the antigen presenting cells are present, right? Likewise, we have macrophages and other cells. So see what happens is in the classic pathway we have the pathogen crossing the first line of defense. It will go to the antigen presenting cell, and the presenting cell will present that part of antigen to the T cell, and T cell will further activate the B cell, and B cell will transform to the plasma cell, and plasma cell will secrete proteinaceous weapons, and these proteinaceous weapons are known as antibodies. Right? There are other mechanism also. Right? The first is uh, another is if it is carbohydrate, it means polymeric structure is there. Suppose so they can directly activate B cell, as B cell is also a kind of antigen presenting cell. Right? So. from innate arm to adaptive arm we have proteinaceous weapons as we have classified in the very first video make sure you watch that uh, to get the overview of immunology right so these proteinaceous weapons are antibodies antibodies are nothing but the proteinaceous weapons okay so some of the features we'll be discussing about antibodies you see uh, they are antigen receptor of adaptive immune system right they are nothing but the receptor of antigen right and they are secreted by b cell right they belong to a large family of protein which is known as immunoglobulins remember immunoglobulin is not another name of antibody right these immunoglobulin not only contain antibody but they contain b cell receptor t cell receptor adhesion molecule tyrosine kinases and other receptors also including your uh, this uh, immunoglobulins what we say or antibodies right see here what is the difference i could say uh, first of all we will see uh, how we could study about the antibodies right so we'll see the structure of antibody i have taken this uh, uh, image from google right so make it uh, to me in order to make it very simple this image is from google you can see this is the typical structure of antibody right we have fab portion which is about 50 kilo dalton we have fc portion that is 50 kilo dalton indeed right this fab is the uh, fragment of antibody this consists of constant and the variable region and this region is almost constant right this variable region is approximately 25 uh, kilo dalton right and this fc fc is fragment of crystallization right the name is so this is about 50 kilo dalton we know now this variable this constant region is always constant same in all right but this variable region varies and this image is from kube you see from the kube book of immunology as i have told in the first lecture that i'll prefer that book so this is the variable region you can see this nd parallel structure of beta strands beta sheets of amino acid these things what they do is they have cd these cd portions these cd portions or cdrs right this is not the cluster of uh, you know differentiation or something like that this is this is your complementarity determining region right this region actually helps 
in determining the complementarity as it is this variable region is a hyper variable region not only variable but a hyper variable region so that you can make out uh, in our body b cell or plasma cell can produce antibody against every kind of antigen which is present on the earth and for sure i can say that from mars also if any antigen will come our b cell is capable of making antibody against it right now you see these antibodies they are made up of multiple immunoglobulin domains about this i am talking about this is about immunoglobulin domain is about 110 amino acid they could vary right three to five strands of beta sheet is present these each strand contain 110 amino acid on an average it may vary also right uh, now i would prefer a image from kobe in order to study the antibody structure so we could see the uh, structure clear it's a it's chapter 3 of kobe you can see see this is the antibody structure we have disulfide bonds here to study at a molecular level of this proteins we can use two things either we can use papain digestion or pepsin digestion in the pepsin digestion both the fragment separates and the papain digestion also both the fragment separates but here the disulfide bonds remains after both this treatment this portion and this portion gets to the treatment of beta mercaptoethanol or mercaptoethanol reduction you might be knowing about the mercaptoethanol reduction as nowadays in days it's a fashion of a straight hairs what happen in that disulfide bonds are broken from the keratin protein so that is done by mercaptoethanol breaking agent it is it is further used in lab laboratories also right so you might be seeing we can have light chain heavy chain separated for a better study now we see the fourth point as antibody have two chains two light chain two heavy chain four polypeptide chains are present so this two light chain is kappa kappa and lambda right and the heavy chain consists of iga igm igg igd and ige see this makes the anti Uh, body in different forms now this is the basic summary of all the antibody we have somewhat a, a unique feature each have right we have igm igd igg ige and iga starting with the igg why i am say starting with igg because it is the most abundant so we can have unique feature as it is the most abundant antibody market it is a unique feature it can pass placenta this is also the unique feature two unique feature we have molecular weight is about 150 kilo dalton single uh, antibody is found it is found in bloods lymph cerebrospinal fluid peripheral fluid etc right it is 50% of total serum protein right half life or we can say can live up to 23 days it can participate in opsonization and agglutination okay now you see IgM IgM when we talk about it's about 900 kilo dalton why it is so heavy because pentameric forms are present right this is the first antibody to be made so this is your homework that you have to find out at what stage of embryo this uh, antibody is formed right it can live up to 5 days now see about uh, IgD so unique feature of IgD is it is a membrane bound immunoglobulin not the secretory one okay very low concentration is found in serum as it is mem membrane bound uh, this is the marker of b cell maturity also now coming toward ige ige has molecular weight of about uh, 200 kilo dalton it is monomeric can live up to 20 days but the unique feature is it can bind to mast cell have affinity towards mast cell and basophil and can increase its life span right and this causes hypersensitivity reaction also we will study about that it okay now iga the unique feature is it is mainly associated with mark mucosa associated lymphoid system and in the clostrum it is found uh, so from mother it could pass to the baby or uh, from uh, best feeding mother it could pass to the baby right now you see we have two questions here uh the session is going to end with the two questions now see immunoglobulin domain is generated when polypeptide chain folds and organize in series of 
So you have to answer A is anti parallel beta sheets, B is parallel beta sheets, right? The next question is which statement is or are correct? You have to choose the one from the given options. Uh, the first statement is beta strain has uh, hydrophobic and hy hydrophilic amino acid. Uh, B statement is immunoglobulin fold is adapted to provide a single scaffold into which multiple different binding sites can be built. Then we have uh, uh, FC portion has CD2, CD4, CD8 and CD28. So that your options are A, A and B. You have a C as a uh, three, third option is C. Then you have fourth option is A, B and C. So which is correct you have to mark. So uh, after ending this, uh, before ending the session, I want to show you the image of Kobe. You can find here, this is the book, uh, printout of that book. So clearly you can see this structure is IgG. This is a single uh, can present in a single form. This is IgD, the membrane bound one. This is IgE, which uh, is present at the uh, surface of mast cell and basophil. This is IgA, the dimeric form is found in the serum, right? This is the hinge region, region and the J chain which join them. IgM is there. This is pentameric. The disulfide bonds are there and J chain which joins the antibody. Uh, this is page number 87 of Kube, the new edition. You can uh, see and this is your homework just to study about these things. So, thank you so much for your patient listening. Uh, uh, we'll meet in the next video. Thank you.